Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord God Almighty, the maker and the possessor of heaven and earth. It is my desire that your life will count, not just that you count your days. It is the desire of God that your birth be celebrated for eternity and not be mourned for eternity. It is the desire of God that at the end of your life, you will stand before the Lord and he would say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I am David Eichbonner and this is David Eichbonner Ministries. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4 verse 7 that he that knows what to do and does not do it, to him it is counted as sin. And so you commit sin when you know what you are supposed to do and you refuse to do it, irrespective of the excuse you give to yourself, hoping God will accept it. There are many people out there listening to me. You believe in your heart that God has called you to do something, either to be in the ministry or to support ministries, or but something you know you are supposed to do that God wants you to do. But you are giving excuses and you are postponing it, procrastinating. Oh, I will do it in the next five years. Let me just make a lot of money and store it up. Oh, I, you know, the ministry needs money. I'm going to save for the next 15 years. When I retire, I will go into the ministry. Each day you refuse to answer the call of God is costly to you and to the people that God has sent you to minister to. And God, in his mercy, gives you time. And when you, you, you exhaust that grace period, he replaces you. There are people that have thought that God does not replace anyone, that for eternity that person's place is going to be left empty in heaven. There will be a seat for people that never made heaven. Let me tell you this. There were 12 apostles ordained by Jesus Christ when he came here physically for his ministry. There were 12. When Judas opted to betray Jesus Christ, he fulfilled a scripture that is written in the book of Psalms. Let his dwelling be desolate and his bishopric, some other translations will say, and his place be given to another. In the book of Acts, that was what uh, Peter quoted when he said it is important that there must be 12 apostles because the person who betrayed had to be replaced and his bishopric was given to Matthias after they had prayed and casted lots. Jesus said if the people would not praise him, the stones will cry out. It tells you that God will replace the unfruitful. In the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, where Jesus gave a parable of a man who gave his servants, one he gave five talents, the other he gave two, and then one he gave just one talent, each one according to his ability to go and trade till he comes. The one who had the five talents traded and got five more. The one with two traded and got two more, making four. And then the one who had just one talent went and hid it. You see, when Jesus, or when the, the man who gave them the talent, their master came, he took the one talent that was not used and gave it to the one who had used five talents and gotten five, making ten. He gave that one talent to the one who had produced extra five and then cast that unfruitful servant into the outer darkness. So that tells you that God will replace those who are not functioning. And then you look at that same story of the talents. The man who, had, who was given one talent, you can read the scripture, Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30. The man who was given one talent, the servant who was given one talent, said to his master, I know that you are a hard man. You reap where you don't sow. 
I was afraid and I went and I hid the talent and now I have brought it. Take what is yours. And people wonder, say, why would what what was that man talking about? Let me give tell you. There are people that they can go to church, they can do certain things, but when it comes to their money, they will they are offended even at the suggestion of giving an offering or being a partner to someone's ministry. You know what, what they say? They say, ah, don't ask for money. God will provide. You know what they are saying? Exactly what that servant said. That their hard-earned money, God wants to collect it for his own work. God should come down and fund his work. That is what they mean. Some of them don't know it. But when you, when you say, ah, should it not, no ministry should ask for support. God should support them. You are boasting that your hard-earned money is not for God. That God should do his own thing. You do your own thing. And then, the day will come that you will realize that everything you have, that you thought you worked hard for, everything you had, you were given by God. And you will account for it. And that is why that servant brought the talent, saying, you, you reap where you don't sow. And so I kept what is yours. Take it. You are under the impression, I'm speaking to those who have that mindset, you are under the impression that God will supply. How? You don't want to know how. He should send money from above. God will do things through the instrumentality of flesh on earth. God will raise people to do it, his work. When Jesus was physically here, read um, Luke chapter 8, there were women that were of their own savings, their own earnings, supporting him. They were giving him money. Luke chapter 8 verse 1 to 3. So if the Son of God came and he required partners to be with him, do you think that God will email money down? When you have that mentality of don't ask for money, go, God will supply. Who will God use? If you don't want to be used by God, stay where you are. Enjoy your hard-earned money. And when you meet Christ, you, bring, you tell yourself, you saved me on the cross. I'm alive and well. Receive me to heaven. And Jesus may tell you, get out, you unprofitable servant. Reason is, whatever it is you have, you have been given by God. And he expects you to use that thing to increase his kingdom. So whether it be money, whether it be influence, whether it be giftings or talents... If you refuse to use it for God, you are making yourself an unprofitable servant. And don't assume that because you feel you are born again, you will enter heaven. Take note of what Jesus said to that servant. You wicked. That Matthew chapter 25. He called the servant wicked and slothful. Wicked and slothful. And if you, are, if you have read the Bible, you know that no wicked person will make heaven. No slothful person will make heaven. So if Jesus has already called that servant wicked and slothful, you understand why he cast the servant to the outer darkness. So let me tell you this. James chapter 4. If you already know, you have been informed, whether you agree with that information or not, you have been informed on what you are supposed to do, you refuse to do it, it is sin. So if you are hoarding your gifts, hoarding your money, hoarding whatever it is that can be used for the kingdom, you are committing a sin against God, and you may be amazed that you will be regarded as an unprofitable servant. So let your life count. Let your life be an instrument in the hands of God. Let your life bring about the expansion of the kingdom. In Luke chapter 13, the book of Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9, the Bible gives another parable of a man who planted a tree. And then he came back, his, his, his vine dresser, the one in charge of the tree, of his vine, was there and he said, why is this tree not producing this past three years? Cut it off. It is wasting the, the, the soil. And the vine dresser pleaded with the owner and said, just give me one more year, one more season. I will manure it. And if it does not produce, then cut it off. 
Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. If your life is not bringing fruit, don't be surprised that God cuts it off. You may be physically on earth, but your ministry has been given to another. Your bishopric, what you should have done, will be given to another. Don't let anyone tell you that, oh, if you don't do it, nobody in eternity will do it. If that was the case, many of us would be unbelievers today. All through scriptures, we see that God replaces those that misbehave. He replaced Saul with David. So don't assume that if without you, that thing will not be done. Without you, there will be a delay. Without you, there will be a delay. But God loves those people that he, he, his son died for. And he will not let you ruin them. So if you are not doing anything for God, and God has assigned you something to do for him, let me tell you this. God will give you a time, just like it's explained in Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. There will be a, a grace period. If you don't get your act together, God will give that commission to somebody who will be faithful. It is my prayer for you that your life will count. Don't live on earth, eat a lot of food, live large, drive beautiful cars, and then assume that because you said a sinner's prayer, you are going to walk right through heaven. You are going to be weighed. Each and every one of us will be weighed. And there are many of you that have what it takes to expand the kingdom. You are sitting on it. Some of you are called. I have met people who told me that they are called into the ministry. I said, okay, so what is happening to you? Well, um, I'm just trying to fix up some things. Um, I want to wait till I'm tr I've made enough money. Um, I want to, when I retire with no strength anymore. He now wants to go into the ministry without physical strength. You need physical strength. Except God deliberately delays your manifestation in the ministry. You need youthful strength to do a lot of things. There are things you need physical strength to do in the ministry. When it's time to fast for long, when it's time to go preaching for long, and if God delays you when you know that he, if God tells you, hold on, before you go into ministry, it means that your physical strength will be used for your training, the period of your training. So if you are 70 when God says start, it means while you were young, you were training. So if you sit down there and tell yourself that you are not going to do anything, you are going to wait till you have satisfied yourself before you start your ministry, let me tell you this, you may not live that long, one. Two, you may lose your commission and god will give it to another because there are people in this world that you have been born to bless there are people in this world that are waiting for that offering that you have to go to the ministry that will take the gospel to them there are people in this world that are waiting for you to be praying for their salvation so don't just count your days and say oh i have lived long make your life count before god that at the end, God will call you productive, fruitful, and not slothful. I am David Agbona, and please subscribe to my channel if you are watching on social media. David Agbona Ministries, or David Agbona, on Rumble, on BitChute, on Brighton, on odc.com, on Locals, on iConnect, FX iConnect. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you.